Hi there and welcome to another episode of Camera Peeps and also please welcome our regular contributor and television industry historian, Andre. Good to be back, David. Good to see you again. What do you got for us today? So today I brought in some monitors and uh, we're going to have a look at this as a PVM series. Mm. Now you would have used this, it yeah. was uh, early 2000s. This, now, this, this was a staple for us guys on yeah, the road. Yeah, as you can monitor. see up on the... That, that was there, my that, uh, set up in the van of the day. Yeah, so th this would have been the reference monitor of the time, being portable, nine inch screen. Now the plugs on the back on this one, it's one of the last in the series. So mm -hmm. you've got SDI, you've got composite, even S video, mm -hmm. which is there. And to power it, basically the standard four pin mm -hmm. XLR. And this one allowed you to put the V-Lock battery on. So that would yeah, go cool. on the back. Yeah, great. So that was uh, a very handy thing. Now that would run for about two hours or something, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, it ran for a while, I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, so it was pretty handy yeah. and these V-Lock batteries were quite revolutionary yeah. at the time. So that was this one and uh, predecessing that was uh, another version of that. And this is a, an older version, yeah. as we can see here. And if we have a look at that, we can see that it doesn't have the SDI, but uh, it still can run on 12 volts and this one actually ran on the NP1 batteries and it took two of them. And that that was the NP1 battery was a standard Sony battery for running beta cameras. It, 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 yeah, it was, yeah. yes, that's right. Yeah. So you could actually run it for quite some time on that. So again, it had the three-way power option. Yeah. Now prior to that one, and we I, had... And can I just ask, uh, so these guys have got composite inputs? Yeah, they all have. Yeah, okay. Composite is the standard. Yeah. Now this one is even older again. And as you can see, it needs a bit of a technical it's on tap the blink, there. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's saying, uh, please put me to sleep, I've okay. had enough. But anyhow, this one was an AC model only. Yeah, okay. So it really was more suited for like a control room type application, but it's much the same mm -hmm. sort of monitor, the nine inch screen. Mm -hmm. But if you had an inverter and you could run 240 volts, mm -hmm. you could use it. So that's mm -hmm. that's sort of in the 1980s, and the previous one was about yeah. the 1990s. Okay, so cool. At the time, they were quite a revolutionary little monitor. Now, we've also got here a five inch screen one, yep. another PVM one. Now, this one uh, also ran on an NP1 battery, yep. which could go in there. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've made this leader, which is out of an old BP90 oh, battery, yes. actually, yes. and it can run it off a 12 volt power supply. And but, so, is so that just a monitor only? It doesn't have like an RF input? No, or they're okay. all just monitors, just, okay. all these yeah, okay. TV sets. Yeah. So, this one has a line only composite video and no other option. So, this was sort of, you know, around the late 80s, in the 80s era. So, th these were good for really portable applications, which we'd absolutely laugh about now. Link fans. But, uh, things like that. Link fans, yeah. Uh, yeah. just for mon field monitoring, playing mm -hmm. back video um, off Umatic probably mm -hmm. or early beta cam yeah. recorders you know it was just a sort of a reference model just so you could just Excellent. have a look at something in color because you don't forget the viewfinders are in black oh, and tell, white tell me about it so yeah. you know that was sort of one of those things now another one you'd be familiar with is this toshiba one yes so this toshiba one was uh sort of like handy for live crosses it was well it was probably the staple monitor before the nine inch out on the road and yep. and it had um the, uh, the battery pack underneath. Yep, now that battery pack, I don't think it ran for very long. I think I it got about recall. an hour at the most. I don't recall. And the, the battery pack is along here, mm -hmm. and it could actually come off. Mm -hmm. So you could actually pull that battery yep. pack off. But uh, this one just had the RCA plug, mm -hmm. so you had to have a converter yes. to get the signal in there, yep. but you could also feed an external 12 volts mm -hmm. in there. Yep. But fantastic for using as a monitor and tuning in off air. So what we did for live crosses, we used to put an earpiece in for the journalist and the journalist could actually take the cue off air because back then there was no delay it was live and that's right and there was no it wasn't a digital signal no that's, that's right. right yeah so what you see is what you get immediately so it was perfect for yeah. tuning into the channel so yeah. channel nine the reporter would have it in their earpiece yes. and uh, they'd take the cue off air yeah. so they were very much used and also another um, bit about those monitors um, in my day that was the monitor that was in the helicopter and they That's they made up yeah. a special bracket on the uh, right hand side eye line 
for the pilot, but I don't think it actually worked very well because of the vibration and, and the pilot was busy flying anyhow and lots of bit of light. It wasn't really daylight readable, so I think they put a hood, tried all sorts of things. Yeah, well, yeah. this one has a daylight hood, which is on the top. Yeah, I don't think so. So that, that was very uh, handy. Mm -hmm. Used to use that. Just It just would help keep the sun Absolutely. off the screen. And I've got a photo, so. um, an on-the-road snap, where... Oh, there it is on the seat. That's right. So this <laughs> is mid, mid uh, early to mid-90s, and that's on uh, a story we were doing on the Indian Pacific. Yeah. And Natasha Johnson was the journalist on that story, but this was a special... And I edited a few oh, of those. Oh, okay. Well, there so you go. What a coincidence. Back on the uh, BVU days. But, but this was like a rare travel kit because there wasn't one monitor per camera crew. It was no. like it was like you took the wide angle lens if you needed yeah. and signed it out and that, and that monitor. Uh, but also there, uh, just getting off topic a little bit, the SP recorder um, needed that playback the device. Adapter, to, to, yes, and the that's 500. kind of sitting there behind it. So adapter, we used to yeah. carry a lot of stuff. But, yeah. but when you're that far from uh, civilization, it was great knowing that... Um, you know, we, we had the material yeah. in the can. So that was a pretty popular model, and that, that lasted yeah. well, and uh, it still goes well today. Yeah, okay. So the other ones we've got here, Yep. this is a National, or which is really Panasonic, or yep. Matsushita. Now this is early 70s. Yep. Now this is uh, quite interesting because it, well one, it's black and white, and um, it actually has the UHF type connectors which was going to be or was the video standard for then so much the same it's the same composite video signal mm -hmm. but it's black and white also has an audio amplifier and it is, as all of these did but mm -hmm. uh, the sound was pretty bad but it was really just good for a reference point it also has the 8 pin monitor plug which a lot of VTRs okay. had that was a standard protocol up until about the late 90s so, so would this have resided in edit suites news exchange yeah it would like have been that. and this yeah. is a, a AC powered one only a lot of uh, Portable video recorders back then mm. didn't have a monitor, so this was a sort of an option. You yeah, could take okay. that out somewhere. Um, yep. Security people mm. use them for mm. monitoring security. Okay. So they were sort of a versatile standard unit. But mm -hmm. uh, oh well, it still goes yeah, after impressive. all these years, and you know that's mm -hmm. sort of something to, to yeah. talk about. Yeah. Now another one I have here, which is this guy. Sony. Just watch the plug because yep. the plug comes out easily. Right. Well, this Sony one. This is quite interesting. This was made in the 1960s, and this is quite a revolutionary television set. Yes. It's actually getting... Uh, I've got an RF converter on there to sort of okay. get the thing to work. So it's getting an RF signal feed in there. But uh, this would be older than myself, from what I know. And wow. uh, it was one of Sony's smallest. Now, the very interesting thing about that is, here's the batteries for it. Wow. So these are the batteries. And... They actually powered it through this pouch here. Right. So you had to have this Sony pouch here. And you put the batteries in and there's a battery test meter. Wow. Didn't go for very long. So there's the batteries now. You had to mix your own batteries up with the acid and wow. the, uh, all the other bits and pieces. So they gave you the whole kit. That was all amazing. part of what was required so as you could make your own lead acid battery mix. I mean, I could imagine this would be a nightmare if you took this on holidays. Absolutely. But uh, that was the required imagine chemicals me. to pour in there, and you would have to actually get get the mix right, and I then had, you'd put it in here, and you'd go off and you'd have your no portable idea. TV set that was black and white that yeah. would run on batteries. But at the time, that would have that would have been amazing. It was revolutionary, yeah. yeah. So but, it was an interesting thing to have. And because you know, retro is in. These days, you know how they make a traditional-looking vinyl turntable well, with a right. USB yeah. port, and and some of the stills cameras. I think the Fuji, and they actually look like old cameras yeah. deliberately, but yet they're digital. I can imagine uh, if they made uh, a, you know contemporary <laughs> version of this, yeah. I think it would sell <laughs> like hotcakes. It probably would. Yeah. But the fact that this is still running, yeah, that it's made in the 60s is quite amazing, yeah, right. and it just goes to show how well made these That's, things were. That is fantastic. So, and it was also, it's very hard to find the battery packs that go with them. Yeah, right. But they were so proud of their invention at the time that they yeah. even had a box that was all nicely wow. made up from Sony. Wow. And as you can see here, you know, it comes with all the earpieces, instructions, and even comes with a nice little uh, Sony 
cleaning cloth so I you can clean the screen. I think my mum had so. a, a hairdryer that came in <laughs> in a case like that. Well, yeah, yeah it's like yeah. that or a makeup yeah. kit, whatever yeah. you want to say. So wow. that was sort of uh, a little bit of a step back it's, in time. It's, yeah, it's pretty amazing. I was just about to comment that you know the amount of effort they went to uh, in their packaging is incredible. But when you think yeah. about it now, that's pretty much what Apple do. You know, when you buy a, an iPad or an iPhone, it has all this beautiful packaging. So absolutely. So Sony were ahead of their time, and they obviously understood the importance of it. So Andre, tell us about connecting up these monitors. Right, well, all these monitors I've shown you have had all these different types of connections from over the years. We've had the UHF one, we've had the 8-pin VTR, we've had S-Video. Now S-Video was interesting because that was the first of the trying to split the video signal so as you'd get a bit of transfer of signal. It was big in the, in the domestic. Yeah, it was sort bit. of, it was to try and split the composite mm. signal up so you didn't get the combined loss. So look, it, it did fairly well. And then it went to the component. Now component actually did support high definition towards the end of its life, but it was, component was pretty good because you got you split the signal up even more. So you got the YRB, so that gave it the best possible yep. way of transferring. DVD players were really the kickoff of this system into the TV sets. Mm -hmm. And then of course, the same socket became SDI, which we're using yeah. currently now. And there's HDMI, which I don't have one of those with me at the moment, but we all know what that looks Absolutely. like. So um, it was interesting how the sockets changed as the years went on. Mm. That's pretty amazing, Andre, and a, a reminder uh, of our technical past. And just to remind everyone, <laughs> this is what we're working with now. Um, this is great seeing this old stuff, but I'm happy in a professional environment. We're very lucky that yeah. we have what we have today, but you've got to remember it was through all this, we've got to where we are now. Yeah, no, And uh, despite the fact that we had to carry it around and all the inefficiencies of it, it, uh, it is interesting. Well, I can tell you out in the field, it was, you know, with the black and white viewfinder of the cameras, you know, it just gave us so much confidence, you know, when we were driving home or flying home or whatever, that you, you knew it was okay. Yeah. So um, they, they did their job. Um, fortunately now there's monitors that do it better. So anyhow, so thanks a That's lot, right. Andre. Good yeah. to be on. And uh, thanks for watching. That's okay.